Greetings and salutations, scientists! Today, we're going to explore the earth-shattering realm of earthquakes. Everybody ready to shake things up? Magnificent! Let's put things in motion, shall we? Earthquakes are powerful forces that shape our world and often strike without warning. But in order to understand what causes them, we're going to have to dig a little deeper. Our planet is composed of four layers. The inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust. The Earth's crust is not one solid piece, but rather divided into large sections called tectonic plates. Earthquakes occur along fault lines, the areas where tectonic plates meet. These plates float along the mantle below the crust. The movement of these plates, driven by the Earth's internal heat, is what causes earthquakes. You see, when two tectonic plates meet, they can either slide past each other, known as lateral sliding, collide into each other, otherwise known as subduction, or move apart from each other, also known as spreading. The friction between these plates builds up over time until it's released suddenly in the form of seismic waves. And boom! We've got ourselves an earthquake, scientists! One of the most seismically active regions on Earth is the Ring of Fire, a horseshoe-shaped zone encircling the Pacific Ocean. Here, several tectonic plates converge, leading to 90% of the world's earthquakes and volcanic activity. Amazing, right? Moving right along, the epicenter of an earthquake is the point on the Earth's surface where the earthquake started. The closer you are to the epicenter, the more you will feel the earthquake. However, an earthquake loses its intensity the further it travels from its epicenter. Everybody got that? Good! On we go! To measure earthquakes, scientists, also known as seismologists, use devices called seismographs. These instruments detect and record the energy released by seismic waves. The magnitude, or strength of an earthquake, is determined by the Richter scale. The larger the quake, the higher the number on the Richter scale. For example, an earthquake with a magnitude 2.5 or less is usually not felt at all. But an earthquake with a magnitude 8.0 or higher is considered a major earthquake and can cause some serious damage. Let's see if you're paying attention, scientists. Earthquakes are caused by A, really loud music, B, the collision of air molecules, C, the rattling of the Earth's core, or D, the friction between two tectonic plates. Did you answer D, the friction between two tectonic plates? You've got me all shook up, scientists. You're right. Let's wrap things up, shall we? The damage caused by earthquakes can be catastrophic. Buildings can collapse, bridges and roads can be destroyed, and sadly, lives can be lost. Recovery from such events often take years and require lots of money and supplies to rebuild. Earthquakes are a stark reminder of the dynamic forces at work within our planet. By studying them, we gain valuable insights into the Earth's structure and how to better prepare for future seismic events. I do hope you found our adventure today to be quite trembling, scientists. Until we see each other again, don't forget to experiment, record, and analyze with empirical evidence!